Right, welcome to a new video. We're back on a bank. I am back in Oxford, back on the Embryo Syndicate Fills Lake, and I've got about 24 hours or so to go. So I've just got into the car park and um, there's a few lads on, so I'm gonna have a walk around. Obviously location is essential. That's what you need to do first. So I'm gonna walk around, see what they've caught, and also see if I can see any fish to give me an idea of where to get in initially. Also in this video, I'm gonna talk about the syndicate itself, tell you what's in here, um, why Embryo are a really good option if you're looking at joining the syndicate, and just give you a lowdown on what to expect if you do wanna become a member. So that's going to be later in the video. I'm also going to do a in focus. So we're going to talk about a particular product that I use in my fishing and how it helps me and why it might be a good thing for you guys to buy. So that's all going to be coming in this video. I'm hoping there's going to be a few scaly bangers as well because there's a few in here and um, it'd be nice to have a few fish to show you. But we'll see what happens. We'll obviously talk through the tips, tactics, all that sort of stuff. But um, first, we need to find them. So let's go and have a walk and see what we can find. Right then, you join me hiding underneath a tree, trying to find some sheep, because it's absolutely boiling today. Now, um, I am actually set up at the moment. I've got base camp set up, and I'm down on a point, which is at the opposite end to the car park. It's basically at the opposite end to Snake Pit, which is a swim I've obviously done well on so far this season. I didn't want to go back in that swim because I fished it so much. I wanted to change the scenery. There were the odd fish up there, but not as many as there had been in the past. And after doing a couple of laps of the lake, I've probably been there a good two or three hours already. Um, I've only just got set up and put a couple of rods out, but I spent a load of time walking around trying to find the fish because as I've said many, many times before, location is absolute key. Now, I would say today the fish are spread everywhere they are all over the lake so i had quite a few options now i've decided to get in here because there's two guys over on the other bank and there's a guy at the top end and so i thought i'll do the extreme and come right down the other end and fish down on the point i've not been on here so far this season and it's done well for me in the past it's a very good area it holds a lot controls a lot of water so it seemed like a good bet and another reason i got in here is as i was walking around there was a guy in here and um he was doing a little bit of stalking he was fishing on the far side he decided to do a little bit of a walk around before he committed to um, getting his rods out and he seen a couple of fish in close so he went around got a couple of rods did a couple of hours stalking and he ended up having a bite as i was in the swim chatting to him and unfortunately it dropped off just as i was about to net the fish for him so i was absolutely gutted for the bloke um, it looked like a good fish it was easy 25 plus and he was gutted too because it would have been his first fish out of here so Unfortunately, yeah, that's fishing, isn't it, at the end of the day. It was um, it was nice to see him have a bite and uh, see him playing it out and that, but it was sad to see it drop off. But um, unfortunately, that's how fishing goes. But hopefully, if you're watching this, mate, you've ended up smashing it and having a few more. So um, all the best, and I hope you've had a, a few more out there since um, in the meantime. But um, anyway, back to what I'm up to. So I've dropped in here. Like I've said, there's been a few fish dotted around in close, so I've baited a few spots in the margin with the opportunity of hopefully getting a chance in the margin and doing a bit of stalking at some point um i've had a lead around i found a spot quite close range i don't want to fish too far out because there's meant to be a bit of weather change tomorrow the wind's meant to be coming in here and we're meant to have a bit of rain in that and it's meant to be a little bit cooler so i'm hoping the fish or the, a lot of the fish are going to move down into this end and follow that wind and we'll have a chance of having a bit more um a bit more to stock in front of us so there's a chance of getting a few more bites i hope it might not work but you never know so I found a spot, less than 20 wraps. I've not gone too far out for a change. I spend a lot of my time fishing sort of 25 wraps, maybe 25 to 30 wraps on here on a lot of the swims. Um, so it's nice to fish a bit closer range for a, for a change. So um, I found a lovely hard clear spot, which has um, got a little bit of silt around it and then a little bit of weed. It feels really, really nice. Um, and so I've put um, two rods on there. I'm going to fish just two rods on it for tonight and then I'm going to fish, I think, another rod potentially in the margin because I've just seen so many fish close in. I haven't decided where I'm going to commit it to yet, but yeah, I'm going to fish one close in. I have actually got a rod out actually round to my left um, on the extreme. So I'm on a point and behind me is actually a part of the lake. It's a little bay and there's a lovely little gravel spot I've been able to sl slot a rod down. Real extreme left of the swim, but I've been able to slot a rod down to it and there's been a few fish um, cruising. I've actually been up one of these trees behind me um, I think that one there and I've been watching the fish cruising along the margin and sort of going around this gravel spot so I'm hoping they're going to drop down onto that but anyway that's it for the time being I need to get some bay out on the, on the um, main spot and see if we can get that sorted and then I'm going to have a bit of food probably have a cider and chill out for a bit because I need to cool off and it is boiling so until anything happens 
I um, will um, put the camera away for now because it's boiling, but um, hopefully I'll have something to show you shortly. Right, it's that time in the video for a new in focus and today we're going to be looking at the Ridge Monkey 7.5 litre mini bucket. It's a smaller version of the original um, modular bucket that Ridge Monkey bought out. It's a fantastic bit of kit and um, it's a simple bit of kit but it comes in really really handy. I've actually got two of them, I'm going to show you what I use them for so um, let's go and check them out. So this is the bucket then, as you can see it's just a little seven and a half litre bucket and basically you pop the top off you might be able to see on here I've got solids written on there this is my solid bag bucket so in here I obviously keep my solid bag kit and then you have this little tray that sits in and um, I've not put a lid on properly but basically this little tray comes out it's got a, um, a lid that clips on so it keeps everything contained in there and basically in this little lid I've got my solid bag kit so normally these will be tied up as solid bags. Um, I've not used solid bags for a few sessions and clearly I need to tie some up and I haven't done. Um, but basically in here I've got my solid bag set up. So these are old rigs, obviously to, if I was gonna tie one of these up, I'd obviously chop that off and put a new rig on. But I've got my, my leads set up on my stem. So obviously I can quickly tra put them onto um, a loop on the line to obviously recast or put a bag out. And normally what I have in here is several bags all tied up ready to go. I've then got any bits of kit that I need, like PVA, spare, spare leads and bits and bobs in the centre. I've got some baiting needles, um, a few few little things, um, some hair stops if I need them. And then that's everything sort of in there, sort of ready to tie a solid bag up. So that's what I keep in the top lid, nice and simple. Just do that up again. And in the bottom, I've got a couple of different packs of solid bags, depending on what size bag I want to use and sort of how far I'm chucking them, etc. And then in the bottom, I've got my hook bait. So in here, I've got some wafters. These are actually Secret 7, um, S7 wafters. And in here, I've got a mix of fluoros. So I use small, um, the DNA small size dumbbells for my solid bags. They're perfect. They fit in there much better and nice and compact. And um, that's what I keep in there. And then I've got the um, solid bag mix, which is a mix of the mini cray mix and the maxi cray mix from DNA. That's what I use. I find the bigger bits imitate the hook bait a little bit more and they're a little bit more um, likely to not fill the hook bait to be too big of a size to pick up and feel a little bit cautious. Um, and then the micro cray mix fills in all the little gaps in the PVA bags so then you can get them nice and compact. I've got a couple of these little quarter um, scoops because it makes it a little bit easier to um, fill up the bag when I'm loading them. I have some different liquids in here and that's a combination of different liquids. It's got some um, liquid, oil and a few other little scent trails in there and that's what I use to basically inject into the bag with one of these if I feel I need a little bit more traction. So basically everything is in that, solid, in that bucket ready to fish solid bags as and when I need to. So if I wanted to just go out fishing only solid bags I could just take this literally this bucket with me and it's got everything in there ready to go and it all just goes in there like that and then that just goes on the um, side of the barrow. So yeah nice and simple brilliant bit of kit I'll show you the other one because I use the other one in a similar way but slightly different stuff in it. 
So this is the other one, different um, sticker on there just so I can identify it. Obviously the old one has got solids written on it, so it is quite easy, but it's just so that I know if I um, try and grab it quickly. Exactly the same, obviously you've got your internal little um, tray. And in this one, this is what I use for my standard rig. So at the moment, I've not really got a lot in there. I've got some mesh bags tied up. So this is what I use for fishing like my leg clip setups. So generally speaking, if I'm fishing a leg clip, I might want to nick on a little bag if I'm fishing somewhere for more bites and I want a little bit of attraction. I'm actually fishing a little mesh bag on my margin rod today, so um, it's coming quite handy for that. I've obviously got the um, little tools and bits and bobs in here for rebaiting and sorting rigs out, that sort of thing. And in here, I actually put my old rig. So when I use a rig, I just chuck the old one in here and so that I can chop them up and save all the bits if I can reuse them so I don't go losing anything. I also put fresh rigs in here. So if I'm expecting a few bites, I actually have rigs tied up in here ready to go so that they're nice and safe, they're not gonna get damaged. And then if I get a bite, I can just grab one out of there, already baited up, ready to go, and I just stick it on the rod and send it out into the pond. Now in the main bit of the bucket, I've got a little bit of PVA, obviously from like my boily fishing, and then I've got several different hook baits. So I've got some larger DNA wafters. I've got my glugged up bug bottom baits. I've got some of the um, DNA half tone, uh, sorry, the um, half tone bug um, pop-ups, which I use in, in conjunction with the, um, the DNA bug bottom baits as a snowman. I've got some cured hook baits, and then I've got some larger wafters. And um, in the bottom of there, I've also got some four mil pellet which is looking quite low at the moment because I've used quite a lot of it. And that's four mil bug. And I actually use that within my spob mix and also to fill up the mesh bags for casting out over the baited area or to cast with showing fish or whatever. So that's basically what I keep in there. And that's obviously for my more general rigs as opposed to my solid bags. And um, yeah, that's what I'd use them for. So great little bit of kit and um, really, really handy. I recommend getting yourself one. So there you go then, hopefully you found that interesting. Great little bit of kit, not too expensive, but keeps everything nice and organized and up together. And like I said, if you think maybe you're gonna just be using solid bags on a session, you can just grab the bucket, chuck it on your barrow, or even carry it if you're fishing off of, um, off your back in a rucksack or whatever, and traveling light. It's a really, really nice way of keeping things up together and in one place. I find it really helpful on a night session or when I'm fishing a longer session, where I know everything's in one place and I can just grab that bucket. So if I get a take and I'm fishing solid bags, I can just grab the solid bag bucket, pick out another solid bag and put it on ready, back on the spot, ready for another bite. So it just makes you a lot more efficient, keeps everything up together, keeps it all organized. And I find the more organized you are on the bank, the more chances you're gonna catch of fishing because it just makes you more effective when you're there. So obviously I've got the other bucket for my more general rigs for my bottom bait fishing, for my wafter fishing or fishing like your normal sort of um, boilie rigs. And it keeps it all in one place so I know where everything is. So I highly recommend getting yourself one. They're really, really good. Really, really like them. Not too expensive. And um, yeah, they do a great job. Well, that thing's been giving me grief all day. I can definitely do with it off. I'm absolutely boiling and could do with cooling down, but summer fishing at the end of the day, but I could really do with them going away. Right, morning. Well, I'd love to say I had something to show you, but um, unfortunately, I haven't. Um, I did have a bite this morning, but um, unfortunately I got cut off. It went off about seven o'clock, and um, it was on the right-hand rod, out um, just shy of 20 wraps on the baited spot. And um, yeah, I got cut off. I was playing the fish for a while, it weeded me a couple of times, I kept it moving, and then it just seemed to go really solid, and then the line cut through. So I don't know whether it weeded me in something, and then there was possibly some little mussels or something um, the line had cut across because it was relatively close to the the sort of rig end that it cut off so I didn't I didn't lose a lot of line but um, I have no idea what it was but yeah unfortunately it cut me off so um, it did feel a reasonable fish but then the ones you lose always do don't they so um, yeah it very gutted but um, it was nice to at least get the bite at least the theory of getting in here and doing what I've done has produced a bite, but um, it's a shame I lost the fish. But um, I'll be honest, this morning I'm feeling absolutely shattered. I think the sun yesterday has really got to me, and um, 
I am really, really feeling it today. Um, it almost seems a little bit like I'm hungover, so I imagine it's quite a lot of dehydration. So I've been trying to drink as much as I can, um, but at the moment it's still not making a massive difference. So I'm gonna be quite honest with you. Um, I'm actually gonna get in a bag or lay on the bed for a bit and just try and chill and try and get a bit of sleep and hopefully I'll wake up feeling a bit more energetic and a little bit better, but um, I'm not feeling too great. So um, it's about half eight at the moment. So I'm gonna just go and have a lay down. Hopefully I get woken up by a fish, but um, I've not really got much else to tell you. I put a couple of spots out. Um, I think I put three out after losing that fish just to top the spot up. And other than that, I've not done anything else. I haven't touched the rods, I haven't moved anything, mostly down to the fact that I just feel really rough at the moment and I haven't got a huge amount of energy. It's not great for fishing, don't get me wrong, I know that. But at the same time, I need to get my head back in gear to be able to actually do anything. So I'm gonna have a lay down for a bit and see how I feel in maybe an hour or two. And hopefully I'll be able to um, find a bit of energy to maybe get a bite before I have to go this afternoon. But um, we'll see how we get on. Hopefully I feel a lot better. Right then, I thought I'd just take a bit of time out the session to talk to you about the lake itself, Phil's Lake, and um, a little bit on embryo. Now, I'm gonna just have a little sit down, set the camera up, and just have a little bit of a talk to you. Now, if you're not interested in getting your name down on a waiting list, or if you're not interested in fishing Phil's or any of the embryo waters, then you might wanna sort of jump ahead about 10 minutes or so. I'll try and put a timestamp in to tell you where to go to. So if you're not interested in knowing anything, then you might wanna skip ahead, because it's about sort of 10 minutes or so of me just sort of going through the fishery, explaining what's in here, what's on offer, and what to expect if you join a syndicate. So I know there's a lot of guys that will probably benefit from it and want to know what's in here but I'm sure there's a few of you that just want to watch a bit of fishing so if that is the case then obviously you can jump ahead and skip the next sort of 10 minutes or so but if you do want to know what's in here and you're thinking about joining an embryo and you want to join a syndicate then I suggest you sit back for the next 10 minutes and just listen to what I've got to say because um, it just gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect if you're going to fish on fills or one of the other waters so um, let's go and have a bit of a chat. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about fills itself. Now myself and Hugh have been on the syndicate since the start back in 2017 and we did do a little bit about what was in here back then but since we haven't really told you much about the venue the stock and what to expect I know there's a lot of people on the waiting list and every season we see new faces that have obviously taken up a ticket so I thought I'd just give you a little bit of an idea of what's in here what to expect and if you're thinking about joining an embryo syndicate or coming on to fills it south then it just gives you an idea of, of what's um what the game is really so Basically, um, the lake is about 12 to 14 acres or so, or thereabouts, I think. I think they say 14 acres. Um, there's 12 swims in total. Um, I'd say half of those are probably areas that control the main sort of zones of the lake. And by that, I mean, um, you've got a few swims sort of in a central area of the lake, which tends to sort of control the main area of water where the fish spend predominantly um, the most of their time. Now that's not to say that other swims aren't worth fishing, but they tend to be sort of more towards the ends of the banks into the corners, which are still good areas if the wind's going in there or the, if there's numbers of fish there. But I say there's probably about six swims that control the main area, which is why you probably tend to see us fishing in similar zones because it gives you the most options when you're fishing. Now, in terms of stock, I think there's about 300 fish. It's hard to say um, exactly how many are in here because there's been a few sort of different stockings at times. So initially I think 250 fish went in the lake. There were then a few fish that were due to go into cables which is the syndicate over the other side um, of the path or the fence. And because of the time delays they had with getting that lake ready to be opened um, the year after this one opened, so 2018 I guess that was, um, they had to put the stock that, or some of the stock that they had ready to go into um, cables, they had to put it into fills. And so the first season, um, we actually had a, a hit list, or the second season it might have been, we had a hit list of fish um, which needed to be transferred across if they got caught. So we basically had a, a print out of the fish, laminated, and um, I think there are about 25 fish or thereabouts um, and every time one of them got caught you'd call a bailiff and they'd come along and it would get transferred over into cables. 
So not all of them ended up getting transferred over, but a good amount of them did. So there's still a few that were due to go over there that are now actually in fields itself. So that added a few fish to the stock. Um, a few fish did get lost, unfortunately, because um, two years ago, the lake, unfortunately, ended up getting KHV. Um, it's now not an issue. Um, it's obviously always going to be potentially within the water. And because of that, they've put in a really good process of... Um, dipping your nets your slings so every time you arrive you have to dip all your your sort of fish care stuff and then before you leave you dip it as well and that way you're not going to take anything anywhere and you're not bringing anything different back into the fishery and that's just to try and protect the stock in the water and also to protect any other fisheries in the area that you might be going to now there's a really good head of fish in here now um, i'd say it's a 20s water um, with a good chance of a 30 if you get a few bites. Um, there are still a few doubles knocking around. Some of the fish that haven't grown as well, they are still sort of in that upper double bracket. I think the smallest fish I've caught recently is, is about 13 pound or so. But um, generally speaking, if you get a few bites on here, you're gonna have a few 20 pounders and you have got a very good chance of picking up one of the bigger girls. But um, in terms of the big fish, I think there's about 15 or 20 fish now confirmed to be about 30 pound. Um, the biggest fish, unfortunately, um, we did lose just after spawning this year. Um, she went 37.10 and unfortunately was found a couple of weeks ago. Um, she obviously was stressed, I imagine, from spawning and we've had a lot of hot weather and it was obviously too much for her and unfortunately she's, um, she did go belly up. But um, another fish got caught actually this week, which was um, actually a fish Hugh caught and actually named. And that was a fish called Bew. And um, that fish was... Um, caught at 36 plus I think and last time I mean when Hugh caught it I think it was 32 so that's put on a few pound uh, a good four pound in a, in a year or two and that is um, around spawning as well so um, it might have been a male potentially um, but it did look really healthy so um, potentially that was a male and it hadn't had, had obviously spawned and lost any weight from that but um, yeah that's another good fish up there I've had fish up to 34 and um, that fish has obviously put on a few pounds since it was last caught. Um, there's plenty of fish getting caught all the time that are putting on weight. Um, a few of the fish are obviously down in weight at the moment because of spawning. So um, a fish that I caught, which is my first 30 from the lake called Trucker, that got, got caught recently um, just over 30 pounds and I had it about 32. So um, yeah, there's, um, the fish are really growing well. Like I said, I'd say there's around 15 to 20 fish over 30. There probably is more. Um, there's been a lot of upper 20s getting caught and those fish at any point are going to obviously break the 30 pound barrier. Now I think going forward um, this fishery is going to be absolutely fantastic. I mean it's already great but I think in terms of size of fish I think going forward it's going to be a really really good water. I think it's going to be um, I think you're going to have an average size of sort of 25 to 30, between 25 and 30 pound and I think there's then going to be a huge head of 30s eventually. Um, a couple of the fish are really growing well um, as I've said, and they're more than likely going to end up going 40. I would have thought the water can easily um, produce that kind of fish. And I think in, a, in five years or so, you're probably going to have a several 40 pounders in here and a really, really good strong head of 30. So you've got a really, really nice fishery to go at on here. Lots of nice fish and um, it's definitely worth putting your name on the waiting list. So if you're not on the waiting list, get your name on there. And if you are on the waiting list, make sure you get the ticket when it comes up because you definitely want to have a go. Now, in terms of the fishing, um, it's a gravel pit, it's relatively weedy, so you do have to do a lot of leading around and finding spots. There are some large clear areas um, in open water um, where it's more silty. Um, you've got some lovely margins in certain places and fish do get caught close in. Um, even yesterday, I um, unfortunately nearly netted a fish for a uh, one of the members, but it dropped off. But um, he had that within a rod length of the bank, doing a bit of stalking. So they do like getting in the margins when the weather's warm. The weather um, actually does play quite a massive part on here. I've actually found it to be more product productive when it's warm, um, as opposed to when it's really wet and windy. Um, although I've caught fish when it's wet and windy, I've never had any big hits. It's always been when it's a little bit warmer, when the fish seem to really switch on. And in terms of winter fishing, I'll be honest with you, the winter fishing is absolutely terrible. I don't fish it in the winter for carp. I've done a little bit for the pike, but I don't fish it um, for the carp in the winter because it's just never, ever produced many fish in the winter. And I know there's people out there thinking, well, of course it's going to produce bites in the winter. You know, people just haven't put in enough effort. People have fished the whole winter on here and only caught one or two fish. Um, it just does not seem to produce bites. They don't seem to want to feed in the winter at all. 
Um, so personally, it's not really ever been worth me coming up here and having a go. I tend to fish more day tickets in the winter and go, go and fish for bites. But um, it has a few issues with flooding. You've got the Thames next to, um, next to the lake. It's probably about 200 yards away. And um, there's about five lakes here, all sort of next to each other in a line. And when the Thames floods, all the lakes get flooded when it's really bad and you end up with a huge water table um, and all the lakes flood over. So winter fishing, generally speaking, is a bit of a no-no. Um, it tends to be pretty impossible to get here. It takes quite a while for the lakes to dry out and the banks to be fishable. Um, so yeah, it's not really the one for the winter. So if you're thinking of joining it for that, it's definitely not worth it. Um, they did do some winter tickets for a while. I don't think they're doing them anymore because people just weren't being able to fish it. Um, but yeah, other than that though, it's a fantastic water in spring, summer, autumn. You do still get the chance of fishing it in the winter. There's other species in there as well. You've got massive tench, massive bream. Now, I love all species, so I absolutely love catching anything else. Um, I've even fished for the other species on a couple of occasions. I've, um, me and Hugh have both had tench over nine pound. We've both had multiple double figure bream. I think Hugh had one just shy of 15. I've had one just shy of 14. And we've had a, quite a few other double um, figure bream as well. So to me, that's a mega fish. I know some people don't want to catch bream, but to me, if I end up catching a double, I'm well happy with that and the same with the tench if you want to fish for the tench close in or um, fish on a float for them you have got the opportunity to catch them um, there's some other fish near as well there's a few sort of perch and stuff knocking around I don't think there's anything massive in here but you can catch the old one in, in the winter if you're um, having a go for the pike or the carp and nothing's happening you want to have a little jig around or something like that or a few spinners there is quite a few perch in here and I do think there's a few other silvers as well um, although I've never really put any time into trying to catch them but in all, it is an absolute mega fishery. The guys at Embryo look after it really well. There's a couple of work parties each year to try and get everything in order and sort out any issues if there are any. The swims are always re-lined most years and re-barked over because all the swims are sort of bark lined. And so they tend to sort of re-bark them every year and do a bit of, um, bit of work on the fishery. And um, yeah, it is just a great place if I'm honest. Um, you have got uh, a bit of a council estate over the back. Um, so you do get the odd car uh, sort of firing up and down the road and the odd motorbike um, shooting around. But um, we've never had any actual issues within the fishery itself. You have got the otter fence that goes around the whole perimeter. So obviously the fish are protected. Um, you've got a gate under um, a combination lock. So um, obviously no one can get in through the gate. And generally speaking, there's always the odd person knocking around. There's always a bailiff walking the lake each day. So there's um, generally speaking people around keeping an eye on the fishery. So you're never really getting any problems. So it's relatively safe fishery. You no, know, I'm happy to actually leave my stuff set up in some of the swims and to um, pop up the shop. There's a shop sort of five minutes away, probably less than that. Um, if I ever need to go and get anything, I'm happy to leave my kit here and feel that it's nice and safe. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a really nice safe fishery, well looked after, We're really well run. The bailiffs are brilliant, they're all really friendly, lovely guys. All the members are really good, treat each other well. I've never really had any issues of um, anyone having any arguments or disagreements or anything like that. It's always been really, really um, sort of, ha it's been, it's just a happy bunch of blokes fishing. You know, you're fishing on your own terms. No one really gets in any, anyone's way. Um, the way the water is laid out, the, generally speaking, you're not ever really fishing that close to anyone either. So there's no chance of fishing sort of on top of each other. Um, yeah, it's just a great bit of water. So that was a bit of a, a bit of a long um, chat. I thought it was going to be a lot quicker than that. But um, hopefully that gives you an idea of what to expect if you are looking to put your name down on the Phil's waiting list. Or any of the other Embryo waters, they're all run in a very good in a very good way, they're all very similarly managed, you know, local local guys tend to bailiff them, um, they know what the crack is, they know what's going on, and it is just a, a really well run fishery. So if you're looking to put your name down on Embry Water, I highly recommend doing it, you will definitely not be disappointed. So um, yeah, go, go now, literally go on the site, put your name down on the list, and um, yeah, maybe I'll be seeing you on the bank soon. So. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, anyway, I've got to pack up in a minute, so I'm going to have another brew and then um, look at packing down. But get your name on the waiting list. You will not be disappointed. Hopefully you've liked the video. If you have, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, down below where well, you can't click on this button actually think about it but subscribe somewhere within the channel um, check out the social media shown at the bottom of the screen we put on lots of content onto the Instagram and onto our story so you can see us live in session and keep up to date what's going on and um, yeah if you get out on the bank be lucky and I'll see you again soon